Hey, it's Luke without a dart. Today we are building the Luchadora. Luchadora is a compact flywheel powered blaster that was designed by my buddy Radio Silence 187. Radio Silence has done some licensing work, other designs with us over the past few years, and now he's really dove into creating full blasters. This is a really compact, fun blaster for CQB, and I've had a blast playing with it. This is probably going to be my personal blaster, but uh, we have printed these in two brand new colors from protopasta. This is mermaid's tail. It's a nice shimmery, glittery green. And then this is tangerine, which is also a glittery uh, sort of burnt orange color, which I really like. It's worth noting that all the blasters come with an orange muzzle because we want to be as safe as possible. Before we get started, please, please, please make sure that you read up on lipo safety. It is very vitally important that you use a lipo alarm and that you follow all the safety, handling, and use instructions with lithium ion or lipo batteries. We've got links down in the description that will show you safety video content as well as tutorial content on lithium batteries. I can't stress enough how serious this is, so do keep this in mind when you're doing your build. Included in the kit is a variety of hardware along with a checklist. You'll have a variety of different screws labeled in their individual bags. You will have a pair of Kraken motors. The system is built around daybreak flywheels. Three switches in total, including two Cherry DB2 micro switches and one rocker switch as a master on off. You also see two parts, two kinds of wire. One is a wire bundle, which are pre-cut, and then two JST 2.0 pH connectors. These connect to the board on both the pusher motor and the board on the flywheel cage. We also pre-solder these JST connectors on here for both the boards to make it a little easier for you to install. Lastly, you'll have your gear motor, which is your pusher motor, and two spacers for soldering on your motors. The tools required for this build are pretty straightforward. You're going to want a soldering iron and something to clean it with. You're, of course, going to need solder. You'll want an X-Acto knife and a pair of pliers. You'll need two sizes of hex key. One is a 2.5 millimeter, the other is a 3 millimeter. And I like to have a Sharpie to mark my wires as I'm soldering onto the cage. You will need a wire strippers. Since I'm doing a lot of screws and we've built a few of these here, I've been told I should probably use the driver. So for convenience, I'm going to use that. But uh, the tip is the same as the 2.5 millimeter. Additionally, you're going to need some super glue. I like the thick stuff like this. It's uh, easier to work with and it dries nice and quick. It's worth noting that Radio Silence 187 did make a really great PDF instruction manual for this guide and uh, you can certainly choose to follow the video and the guide just the guide or just the video both will get you to the end goal of building the blaster so the first thing we're going to do is start with the parts that you see in front of me everything else can be set aside for now we're going to start with them some assembly before we actually do any soldering you're going to want to take this spine part here and your first decision you have to make is how strong you want your detents to be on your mag release. So there are two detents. These are ball bearing stainless detents and they get glued inside here. You put one in, that's fine. That's a lighter hold. Put two in if you want to use a tri-mag or something like that, or you'd like a firmer grip on the actual magazine itself. To install these detents, you're going to apply a small amount of glue around the rim there. And I'm going to go ahead and push that down in place and it should pop in and sit approximately flush, just like that. As I said, I'm gonna go ahead and install the second one because I want it to have a nice firm grip. If you like it a little lighter, it kind of depends on your magazine size and style. And if you've got any excess glue, you can wipe it away. If you use too much glue, you might see a little bit of ghosting there. Um, you can clean that up with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. It's also good to double check that these detents still press after you're done. If you use too much glue, you can get them glued in place. If you ever have any issues, just reach out to us by email. We're gonna take this core piece and the right side of the shell, these two pieces, and we're gonna put them together here and we're gonna put one 20 millimeter screw through the top there. Next, we're gonna take an eight millimeter screw and place it through this hole here. As you've probably noticed, the brass inserts are all pre-installed by us here at the warehouse. We have the right tool for this connected to a soldering iron, which makes it a little easier and less finicky. Next, you're gonna need two 12 millimeter screws and your rev trigger. You're gonna take one screw through the rev and through here. 
And you don't need that to be fully tight, just, uh, you can tighten it all the way and back it up slightly or just have it just short of full tightness. Then you're gonna take the next 12 millimeter screw and you're gonna place it back here. Next, you'll need one 16 millimeter screw to go through this hole here, connecting the back half of the right shell to the front half. Next, we're gonna install the N20 cage. This is the pusher motor cage, and this simply drops in the top. And we're gonna take a 12 millimeter screw and put it right there. Now we're gonna take our detent core and we're gonna slide this up through the bottom, like so. And we're gonna line up that hole. This should sit flush right there. And this is a 20 millimeter screw. Next, we're gonna take a 16 millimeter screw, put it right through here. Next, we'll take our back plate, which is also our sling attachment point, and we'll slot that in there, and one 16 millimeter screw in this hole here. Next, we're going to assemble our pusher wheel. You're gonna take two square nuts, two M3 by 10, and one M3 by eight. First, you're gonna take these square nuts and insert them into the slots on the pusher wheel. Next, you'll take the two 10 millimeter screws and screw them in either side, just far enough to hold them in place for now. Last step on the pusher wheel here is to take your eight millimeter and send it all the way through here. Next, you're going to want to pull out the pieces that you can see in front of me here, and you're going to want to get your soldering iron turned on. And of course, you're going to want safety glasses. I'm gonna try something a little different here today, and the great thing about modding is there are a lot of ways to accomplish the same goal. I generally don't pre-tin switches. I never have really done that with a few limited exceptions, but Greg says that he loves doing that method and does it all the time. So today I'm going to pre-tin these switches first. Next, we're gonna install the N20 gear motor PCB. And this is just two holes go through here and get a little bit of solder each. So you can set that on top. Note there's no polarity needed on this because the pusher motor will work in both directions. You can now go ahead and plug in your JST. You wanna plug this in in advance of installing the motor because it's pretty tight inside the housing. Next, we're gonna install our motors. We're not gonna install our actual board, but you can use the board to determine your orientation. These two dots right here, these white dots are for the red terminals on your motor. And so since that faces, that's your barrel that will go towards enemy, you can just simply line that up and drop these motors with the red dots in the back towards this side. You'll want a little bit of Loctite on each flywheel screw, and you'll want to install them completely flush in the flywheel cage. When you're done with your flywheel cage, the flywheel screws should be nice and flush like pictured here. Next, we'll install our flywheels. As a guide, this flat surface right here, this actual barrel, is the dead center of the flywheel center. And there's a picture of this in the diagram. I'll probably put that on screen as well, but essentially you're trying to get that to match I've got it pretty well lined up there, you can see. So that's how deep you're going to push your flywheels on. Anytime you're installing flywheels, you want to support it by the bell at the bottom of the motor can. And there you can see we are, it's kind of hard to show perfectly, but the idea is that you're perfectly centered on that channel for the dart and the center line of the wheel is this surface right there. Now we're gonna start with our main positive lead. You're gonna to wanna to strip the end of that wire. First, you wanna make sure you get the right orientation of your switch. You want the circle downward like that so that when it's on, which is the line, it isn't interfering with the space of the grip here since the tolerance in here is relatively tight. So I put a little kink in that wire about 90 degrees. I'm going to pre-tin that connection there, that piece of wire, and then I'm gonna solder that in place. Now we're going to place our switch and run the wiring up through. There's a slot that passes through the center here, so we're gonna feed it through there, and I'm gonna pull that out through the bottom. 
This will be our main positive lead to the battery connector. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that right there. Leave about three inches of slack here to allow for insertion of the battery in the compartment later. Now that I've got that wire length measured, I'm gonna pop this switch back out and I'm going to attach the second piece of red wire there to go to our flywheel cage. And again, I'm going to pre-tin that wire and then I'll solder that onto the switch here. Now we're gonna wire up our positive and negative to our MOSFET spanning board. So first we're gonna take the negative wire, the black wire, and we're actually gonna run that through that same channel. Let's see if I can run it from this direction. I expect I can. And that will again be our negative lead from our battery. And that's going to come to our MOSFET board here. So we've got, on the board, we've got uh, negative and positive marked. You're gonna hold it in this orientation. We're gonna solder negative to the circle, positive to the square. Give that little wire a little bit of a twist. use helping hands to secure the other side and then we can solder in place and then we'll do the same for the reverse except this time we're actually going to want to cut the wire to allow enough slack to visualize that this is going to sit underneath the motors just like this so you want to leave enough slack there but not too much slack we'll strip that end and Kind of repeat the same thing we did for the positive. Now we're going to take our N20 gear motor that we previously soldered and attached the JST connector to, and it's going to face this way, and it's going to go straight up through this hole. And as you're doing that, these wires are going to go back through that same wire channel to the main flywheel cavity here. So it's kind of a two-step or simultaneous operation. Now we're going to install our pusher wheel. So you're going to want to tighten these screws just until you see one of them on one side would do it and uh, probably nothing on the other side. And you're going to want to align that side where you've got one protruding out of that hole with the D shaft that's on here. You can see there's a flat side to this shaft right there and probably easiest to line that up and then tighten it. And you want to make sure that there's no, none of the shaft is sticking out of the top of there, though Greg, my mod tech, tells me that that hasn't actually happened. And we're going to tighten both sides evenly. Worth noting, it's really not a good idea to turn gear motors by hand. Uh, I get customers that like to play with their gear motors. Uh, they are delicate and they're not meant to be uh, <laughs> uh, turned by hand. You really should only turn them with electricity. <laughs> That feels pretty snug. You don't need to over tighten it, but you don't want it going anywhere while it's uh, working. And uh, that should be good to go there. Next, we're going to take our negative, our black wire from the N20 gear motor. It actually doesn't matter which one you use, but we're gonna use it black to keep it simple. Uh, take up some of the slack from this negative wire here. Make sure your board's approximately in the area it's gonna be. We're going to snip that wire, strip it, and connect it to our negative on the board. And I'm going to do this on the opposite side of the board that I soldered the other wire, but essentially soldering to the same bundle of wires or the same hole. Next, we're going to install both of our switches. You're going to want to install them with the lever pointed up. Each one gets two M2 by 12 screws and an M2 nut on the opposite side. You're just gonna tighten this, doesn't have to be over tight, and then repeat for the other three. And after you've got all four of the bolts and all four of the hex nuts on the other side, your switches are ready to solder to. We're gonna solder in place. Since we pre-tinned those, it should be pretty easy to attach our wires. So we're gonna take this JST jumper wire, the red one from our pusher motor. It's threaded through and it's going to go to the normally open 
on the, which is the middle of the top switch here. So we're gonna cut that, just give it a little bit of slack, doesn't need a ton. And we'll solder that in place. Now we'll take our JST connector and we'll plug it into our MOSFET board. And then these two wires are gonna get wired to the bottom two of the bottom switch. And that's the common at the bottom and the normally open in the middle. So make sure we give those just a little bit of slack. And we'll pre-tin both those wires. And then we'll solder that one in place. And then the second one. Next, we're going to jump the two common terminals. That's this one here and that one there of the two switches together. And you can use some of your leftover JST wire. You just need a little bit of a loop like that. So I'm gonna cut and prepare a two-sided stripped part with a little bit of pre-tinning on both ends. Now we're gonna solder the AutoDarts MOSFET span board to the motor terminals themselves. We're gonna use these nice little motor spacers and we are gonna pre-tin these. Pre-tinning is optional, but uh, will help you with a pretty quick connection. These just drop in place. They only go on one way, so if you've got them backwards, if they look crooked, they actually will work in the, in the you know, sort of crooked variant or orientation, but they'll be just fine. Oh, and I said I was gonna pre-tin those. See, habits? Have it die hard. So we'll just put a tiny bit of solder on each, each of these four terminals, and that'll help everything flux even faster when we put on the board. Again, this is not required. You can do it all in one, but this will require a little bit less heat overall. And I'm gonna try kind of wedge this board up in here to hold it in place. This was uh, a recommendation of our build tech who's built the most of these. He's actually uh, a few feet from me here walking me through everything because he's done more of these than I have at this point, which is the fantastic ability we have now of just having more people around to help out. And then we'll solder all four in. You don't need to fill the whole cup. You just need enough for a nice solid connection. However, if you want to fill the whole cup, I don't know, have fun. It's not going to hurt anything either. Either way is just fine. But uh, if you ever need to remove it in the future, it's a little easier if you don't go too crazy with the solder. Now we're actually going to screw our cage down onto the blaster. So you can flip the blaster up here and it'll actually sit on this flat side here. And we're gonna screw in this screw here and that one there. And you'll notice up top here, they've got little indentations indicating the screws that need to be screwed on that layer. The flat one here is just a pass-through hole for the cage cover. So we'll slide that in place and this is two eight millimeters, M3 by eight millimeter screws. Now we're gonna assemble the top cover of the blaster. So first we're gonna put on the nose and this is just two M3 by 12s down through the top there, or I guess it's actually the bottom. Now we're gonna flip that over and we're gonna grab our Picatinny rail. It's got three holes, which line up only one way. And we're gonna take three M3 by eight screws and go down through the top. And that's the top portion assembled. Now we're gonna assemble the left side of the blaster. I'm gonna start with the grip. You're gonna to wanna to tuck all of these wires, make sure that they are behind the core of the blaster. And then we're gonna set this down on top. Then take this side, this portion of the shell, and we're gonna take an M3 by 20 and put it all the way through, just like we did on the other side. Next, we'll take the back panel body plate and we'll put an M3 by 16 through this hole right here. Another M3 by 16 through this hole. And then an M3 by 20 through this hole right here. Next, an M3 by 12 in the back top left hole. 
top right hole from this orientation. An M3 by 16 right next to the sling point or optional stock point, which can also be in that same position. And then an M3 by eight in the front bot bottom of the grip here, just like the other side. Then flip the blaster up top and we're gonna put two more M3 by eights just like you did over here to match that side. Now we're going to take our top assembly and pusher and install them on the blaster. First, you're gonna take your actual reciprocating pusher and that'll slide freely in there. Then we're gonna take our top panel and flywheel cage cover and drop that in place. When we install the pusher cover, we're actually going to line up this screw with this slot. Um, so you're just gonna kind of work it on there and it shouldn't slide back and forth once you've done it properly. And then we have five M3 by 12 screws to install on the top side. Now we're gonna wire our XT60 connector. I'm gonna cut these to the same length, strip them, give them a little twist, put a little piece of heat shrink on both. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-tin both of these just a little bit. And positive to the positive. Positive is always flat side in case your connector is mislabeled. And then we'll fill the cup with solder and repeat for the other side. And then you can heat gun the connector. I have neglected to prep my heat gun before the shoot, so I am <laughs> going to just use the side of my soldering iron. You could also use a lighter, but I would generally recommend a heat gun. And then lastly, I always like to use a large piece of heat shrink on the connector just to clean everything up. And then you'll heat gun that in place. <laughs> We've been struggling here a little bit. If you're watching this video, um, the mod part has gone very, very smoothly because I've got uh, Greg next to me here helping out. But the camera portion has been a little questionable. We got a new monitor and a new recording set up in the hopes of overcoming an, a heat issue with our camera. And that has not gone very well today. We've actually had to swap cameras and mess around with settings. And um, glad we at least have gotten to finish this today. <laughs> Now we're gonna install our battery door holder for lack of a better name. And you're gonna thread your XT60 connector through there. And then you're gonna put four M3 by 20s, the longest screws through these holes here. Now we're gonna attach our front nose here and it's gonna be one screw through each side like so. And these are M3 by 12. We might switch these to M3 by 10 in the future. So if you happen to see that's all you've got left in your kit, you'll know why. And you're not gonna wanna tighten all the way down because these two screws do meet in the middle. So you can go most of the way and then repeat on the other side until they're tight. Now we're gonna install the trigger and you're gonna take an M3 by 20 screw and you're gonna go through this hole here and there's going to need to be a hex nut, the one hex nut for the build on the other end. So feed this through, and then on the other side, we should see the uh, screw come out. We're gonna get that hex nut on there, and we will tighten that in place. Now we can put on our battery door. Battery door has one screw through the back, which is a thumb screw. And normally you would insert your battery, tuck this up inside, slide that up, and screw this thumb screw through the hole here. As far as the blaster assembly, that's actually complete, but one addition is installing the magnetic holster mounts on the side of the blaster. These may come pre-installed depending on our current process here. We're always sort of fine tuning how we actually put things together here in the shop, but they essentially need to be screwed in nice and tight into these holes. And of course got two brass inserts on this side or two brass inserts on that side. Considering I am right-handed, I'm going to screw them into the left. 
And if you need to get these extra tight, you can take a towel or a piece of cloth. You never want to use a tool right on these sharp edges because those are used for mounting and you can uh, give these a little bit of additional tightening that way. And again, like I said, these may come pre-installed depending on our current, uh, current uh, process here. As far as the basic blaster assembly, that is ready to fire. You can plug your LiPo in and you are ready to rev, rev and fire. There are two additional add-ons that I'm gonna show you how to swap now. So if you don't have any other pieces and you just wanted to see the assembly, you've got that here. But next I'm gonna show you how to do the grip scales or how to swap the back point for a stock point should you choose to add on a stock point. So we'll start by removing three screws, this one up here with the nut on the other side and then this one and the one on the opposite side. Then you can pre-insert one hex nut for the back side. And I'm gonna start with the M3 by 10s for the bottom on both sides. And then since my hex nut fell out, I've reinserted it there. I'm gonna hold it with my hand and then I'm going to place my trigger back in place and take an M3 by 25, the longer screw in this kit and send it all the way through. And there we have it. That's how you swap out the grip scales if you prefer that feel. Obviously the cage fighter sort of look, the origins of Luchadora are uh, underneath here. That was definitely sort of the skeletized look that he was going for, but we definitely knew we would get requests for this. And as a si fun side effect, the layer height here, it's just standard 0.2 millimeter layers, but it sort of has like a wood grain feel to it. Uh, and because of how this cut was done it has kind of a neat look. It feels like you're looking at a, some sort of wood grain or something funky. I just love, love how it turned out. Next, we're going to show you how to swap for a stock point, assuming that you want to install a stock point instead of the regular sling point. I like it as a sort of close quarters battle blaster, but I can definitely see why some would want a, a regular stock point. So to install the stock point, first we're going to need to actually attach them. And there are two different sizes here. This is an M2.5 driver required here. It's an M3 screw, and then this one requires an M3 uh, driver. So I've got that different size here. We're gonna drive these through their appropriate holes here, and we're just gonna bring them up to where they're about flush or just slightly poking out the other side. Ha! And then we're going to line up the large and small holes with the respective screws and drive them all the way in. And you wanna hold this tight flush together as you're driving this. And I've gone most of the way, it's not 100% tight on the top screw because I wanna drive this one in next. You can kind of make sure that you're lined up and centered. The screws should line it up for you. And then we can tighten that all the way. assume I'm there. Yep, and there we have it. That's set. Now we're gonna install that on the actual blaster. Now we'll need to get the sling point that's on here off. We're gonna remove this screw, this screw, and the top one. Push it in. And then we're gonna kind of work this in a little bit and then back out to get that notch. If you have any issues uh, prying this out, if it's a little tight, the tolerance is you can take a small screwdriver and just kind of pull that out. Then we'll take our sling point and work it back in kind of the same way we just took that one out. Just like so. And then we're gonna replace the same three screws. The shorter one goes up top the longer two on the sides. That did not go where I wanted it to. Don't dump your screw inside your blaster. Hot pro tip. And there we have it. That is installation of the uh, stock point. Now that we've got everything assembled, we're gonna go ahead and throw a battery in here. Gonna put a LiPo alarm on that, of course. 
And then we're gonna slide that back up, up like that. I'll probably put that, let's see, you know what we'll do is we'll put the connector on the same side as the wires. And then we'll put the battery cover on. You can technically fit a larger pack in here, but I, it's a lot easier to just go with the 950. The graphene pack has plenty of current available and it's uh, just a lot easier to get inside there. And then we're gonna wanna turn our blaster on, which is up. Slot in our mag, and let's try not break anything this time. Can I, nope, can't shoot that way. <laughs> Perry's off screen over here. He gets up as I move. And uh, the magwell again, of course, is just standard ball bearing detents. I really like this. It's like the more I use it, and I think Greg was telling me the same thing, the more I like just not having to think about a mag release because at the end of the day, these are not uh, firearms. This is a toy. So, you know, if a magazine drops out, it's not like a real bad situation in reality. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this mod guide. Uh, hopefully there wasn't too much camera shake. We are working on a new setup and a new overhead. We are working to improve things every week here with the video studio and try to make the content better than ever. Until next time, I'm out of darts.